In this video, I will explain why I believe my ball python's current setup, a 5 foot or 150 cm long terrarium, is mediocre, and why I will try to upgrade her to a different setup in the near future, despite my terrarium being well above the minimum size recommended for a ball python enclosure, at least in the general consensus of the mainstream snake keeping hobby. Let's start from the beginning. Before I adopted my ball python, my primary source of information on how to keep this species came from online care guides, forums and social media influencers. At that time, I more or less subscribed to the idea that many of these sources seem to present, of ball pythons being pet rocks, that is to say very sedentary animals that did not require a lot of enrichment or space, while I personally did want to keep my snakes in enclosures long enough for them to stretch out fully along one side. I never really questioned the countless care guides or people claiming that an enclosure where the snake can stretch out fully along two sides is just fine. I also saw no issues with rag keeping, provided the rags met the minimum spatial requirements, as this form of husbandry is incredibly normalized in the hobby. Well, these views gradually shifted when I came to adopt my ball python. As you might remember from past videos, when I first adopted her, she arrived in a 90 cm or 3 foot long terrarium, despite being around 145 cm or almost 5 feet long herself. In this terrarium, there was a tiny heat mat, an inaccurate hygrometer, and a single hide that was far too small for the animal. And while I was able to replace the heat source, add another hide, and fix the humidity levels so the snake was finally able to shed properly, because the adoption was not yet certain, and there was a possibility of the previous owner taking the snake back, I was unable to upgrade her setup further for the first few months of her arrival. This gave me ample time to observe her behavior in her current setup, and it wasn't great. The snake was very stressed and seemed to just want out constantly. At that point, I was laboring under the belief that a snake should be left alone in its enclosure for the first two weeks or so until it gets used to its new habitat and calms down, but boy did my snake seem to have other plans. No matter how many weeks I waited, meticulously maintained the appropriate temperature and humidity levels, the animal was constantly active, trying to get out at almost every opportunity and also refusing to eat for more than three months. It was only when I gave in and just started letting the snake out whenever she wanted, even during the daytime, that she started to calm down more, and would occasionally have periods of rest, which were typically a few days where she didn't want to leave her enclosure. I believe, at some point then, that her high activity level changed from being a stress response caused by being trapped in such a small enclosure to being more of a hunting and exploring behavior. After she finally ate for the first time in three months, she calmed down even further, and didn't miss a meal for an entire year afterwards. However, despite these improvements, she would still want out very often, in fact almost every evening unless she was digesting or in shed. Six months in after the snake's arrival, I was finally able to complete the adoption process. Did you know that ball pythons in France actually need to be microchipped? I had to submit documents to the French Environmental Protection Agency to actually have the chip number registered under my name. Now you know. The first thing I then did after the adoption was to order a new terrarium and begin setting it up. Feel free to check out my video that documents the whole process if you're interested. So. How did the snake adapt to this newer, much larger enclosure where she could stretch out fully? While it was definitely an upgrade and she did seem to be fine spending more time in there than in her previous enclosure, she still seemed to like spending time outside, and had her very active phases. Sometimes she would want out every evening, for days, and other times she was mainly chill, but did want me to open her terrarium slightly so she could stick her head out and hang out like that for a few hours. Other times, she would want out during the middle of the day just to get out and then continue sleeping somewhere else, for example under her terrarium or in my bookshelf, which are places she seems to have perceived or identified as additional hides. Overall, this was fine by me. At this point, the snake was mainly calm throughout the day, she ate normally, shed normally, and her bouts of activity were very manageable, because I was a chronically ill PhD candidate primarily working from home at the time, which means that I was able to let her out pretty much any time she wanted. Great, I thought to myself, finally a setup that works, no further improvements required. Right? 
Well, that was what I thought until I decided to go on holiday for 10 days. My first proper holiday in like two years because PhD life is a nightmare. Now, I wasn't going to abandon my snakes completely during this period. Instead, I had friends come over every few days to check on them and make sure that they had everything they needed, including fresh water. Since the python had occasionally spent over two weeks just chilling inside her enclosure of her own volition, I assumed it would be fine to leave her in there for 10 days without letting her out. But it turns out there is a big difference between a snake choosing to remain somewhere and being forced to stay there by being locked in. So what happens when a snake wants out but can't get out? Well, after five days of being away, my friend, who came to check in on the snake, sends me the following picture. This is the python basking under her heat projector on the side of her double decker hide which she seems to have managed to knock over, causing it to fall forwards in a way that makes it impossible for her to get back into both her warm hide and her humid hide. Now this double decker construct is actually quite heavy and even when she climbs all over it and pushes herself between the wall and the hides, which she often does, she has never before managed to knock it down in any way. There was also a ton of substrate in her water dish, so clearly the animal had gone on an intense rampage. And even while my friend was trying to clean things up, they kept messaging me that the snake was trying to get out. Clearly she was not very happy in there. However, I was still gone for five more days, so there was nothing we could do but just keep the snake inside the enclosure until then. When I got back, it was like we had regressed to an earlier time. For around two weeks after my return, the snake wanted to get out all the time, and I mean like 24 seven. And each time I let her out, she was moving around nonstop. And while this did provide me with some cute footage of her exploring my apartment, it was clear that she was not calming down. She also refused food for the first time since a year during this period, although she did eat shortly after she had initially refused and I only ended up wasting one rat. Again, it was obvious that she had not been happy with the situation. Unfortunately, at that point I had assumed it was more of a fluke as this had never happened before. And so I wasn't too worried when I ended up going on holiday again a few weeks later. This was in a period of my life where I was trying to make up for all the years I had missed out on seeing my friends and family due to the pandemic, but mainly also my awful PhD life. Once again, I didn't abandon the snakes. I always made sure to have people come in and check in on them so that they had everything they needed in their enclosures. The only thing they didn't have was the freedom to roam around outside. Well, guess what happened once again? While my snake did not destroy her hides this time, she once again became extremely restless and wild in the weeks that followed my return. At that point, I was able to put two and two together and realize that this adverse reaction was not a one-time thing and was likely to occur every time the snake was denied the freedom of movement she had come to expect. As the legend herself, Lori Torini, once responded to my YouTube comment, what she says is that freedom is a primary reinforcer for most organisms and people don't always realize that. Interestingly, Lori reported observing a similar behavior in her reticulated python, which had become accustomed to being let loose around the house. And once this snake was trapped in its terrarium for a few days, she describes a similar kind of rampaging behavior like I observed in my ball python. In general, content by people like her and feedback by others on my videos have come to show me that my freedom-loving snake is not some strange exception. In fact, there seem to be a lot of people making very similar observations of their ball pythons and their behavior when they are provided with the freedom to move around and explore. However, the fact that this is not commonly acknowledged in the wider segment of the hobby is somewhat depressing. And this is also why I now side-eye anyone who comes in trying to claim that ball pythons don't actually need that much space and enrichment, and that they are totally fine in minimalistic racks which they treat as totally viable alternatives to more elaborate setups. Like the way that you keep your snake is a totally personal choice up to you, and the snake doesn't really Really care either way, which in my opinion is just a cope perpetuated by hobbyists and influencers to justify their low keep 
keeping standards and what is essentially animal hoarding. Because let's face it, it's a lot easier to keep 100 snakes in what are essentially heated shoeboxes than keeping them in enclosures with the appropriate dimensions, lighting and enrichment. Sure, your animals will survive in your racks, but they sure as hell aren't thriving in there. I often see people who keep their animals that way describe them as beautiful but boring pet rocks that just sit around and do nothing all day. Well, what are they supposed to do in there? It kind of becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy. People depriving their animal of any kind of stimulus or enrichment, which results in what is a stunted animal, for lack of a better word, that is then perceived to be very sedentary and inactive, which in turn encourages people to minimize their setups even further because clearly the animal doesn't do anything, so it must not need anything more. Unsurprisingly, the people who end up giving their snakes space and freedoms will typically observe them making use of it. In my case, by giving my snake access to my entire apartment, she now seems to view it as her habitat. And when her access to this habitat is denied, she becomes stressed. Oh, and before I move on, some people may argue that everything I was just ranting about is essentially anecdotal evidence and thus doesn't actually prove anything on its own. And to that I say, yes, I agree. However, these observations have not just been made by me and a handful of other hippies who happen to own free-range snakes. No, there is in fact an entire field of research which has produced a plethora of scientific studies exploring how snakes respond to things like enrichment, different enclosure sizes, and parameters such as the presence or absence of UVB. And there are countless more studies that are dedicated to characterizing the behavior of popular pet species like ball pythons and corn snakes in the wild. And guess what the general consensus of these studies tends to be? Here's a hint, it's not in favor of rack keeping. If you're interested in more details, I will put some links to some relevant studies and YouTube channels below. And I am actually planning to make a video going over some of them. A kind of literature review and debunking of common husbandry myths, if you will, at some point in the future, but like, don't hold your breath. Okay, back to the subject at hand. It is for the previously mentioned reasons that I would like to find some sort of solution so I can avoid stressing my snake out every time I leave for slightly more than a few days, which is not often, but still often enough. Obviously, the main solution to this issue is to provide the animal with more space. But how do we go about that? Well, originally I was thinking of just making the terrarium bigger, maybe getting a 2 meter long terrarium. But still, 2 meters is just a fraction of the 30 or so square meters she has access to when I let her out. Therefore, I came to the conclusion that the nicest thing for the snake and for my conscience would probably be to just dedicate an entire room to her by making it snake proof and then putting her terrarium inside and leaving it open. Unfortunately, I can't do this at my current place. My living room and kitchen are literally connected to each other, but as soon as I get a job and manage to get out of the soulless suburb that I am currently trapped in, the possibility of snake proofing a room will be something I will keep in mind when searching for new places. Now, the room doesn't have to be reserved only for the snake, because I don't think I would have enough space to spare for that. However, I think with a bit of creativity regarding the storage and placement of items, a general use room could become snake proof. I'm thinking a linoleum or stone floor or some kind of floor cover in case the snake decides to do her business outside of her enclosure. I'm also thinking of closets and shelves with lockable doors so she can't get into them and destroy precious artifacts, which has happened before. And I would also like to avoid having any machinery in that area as she unfortunately has managed to get behind my fridge and into the interior workings of my washing machine and um, I don't need to repeat that. I would also like to try and create some kind of activity station, kind of like the one that Lori Trini uses for her snakes because I think that this would be a safe place for them to explore and both of my snakes would probably appreciate the extra enrichment. Okay, so I think I will end my video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the content wasn't too rambly. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to stay tuned for similar content, as well as the occasional RC video. Okay, time for me to now stop wasting my life and go send off some job applications. Goodbye.